One question that I get often is, what is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? And how can I know if I've committed it or not? One of the occasions where this is mentioned is in Matthew chapter number 12, where Jesus says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You see, this instance regarded a very specific point in time with a very specific group of people. Jesus was performing miracles, and the Pharisees were claiming that the miracles that Jesus was doing was through the power of the devil. In fact, they claimed that he was possessed by a devil. In Mark chapter 3, we get a very specific idea of what this blasphemy is. In Mark chapter 3 and verse 30, it says, Because they said he hath an unclean spirit. Meaning their blasphemy against the Holy Spirit had to do specifically with the fact that they claimed that Jesus was possessed by a devil. And it's not only that they had claimed that he was possessed by a devil, but the Greek word translated they said is in the progressive tense, meaning they were continually saying it. It was a continuous action, not just a one-time deal. The blasphemy against the Holy Spirit has to do with claiming that Jesus himself, in his earthly body, during his earthly ministry, is demon-possessed instead of spirit-filled. See, this kind of sin cannot be duplicated today. The Pharisees were a very specific group of people. They had the law, they had the prophets, and Jesus was on earth performing miracles in his earthly body, and they were there witnessing those miracles. And they were claiming to Jesus' face that he was possessed with the devil. This cannot be committed today. They had the law. They had the prophets, they had the Holy Spirit stirring in their hearts, and they had the Son of God right in front of them, performing miracles and telling them the truth. And they were rejecting it. This is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. There's never been in the history of the world a people who had so much light and truth right in front of them, and they wholeheartedly rejected it. They purposefully attributed the works that Jesus was doing to the devil, even though they knew the truth, and even though they had the proof right in front of them. This is equivalent to stopping your ears to the truth and not wanting to hear what the gospel says. This was their final rejection of God's grace. They were willingly blind of what Jesus was trying to show them. In Mark chapter 3, The Bible says that those that did this act were in danger of eternal damnation. In the very next chapter of both Matthew and Mark, Jesus begins to speak in parables so that the religious leaders and those who had just denied him would not be able to understand what he was teaching. This kind of blasphemy cannot be committed today. Jesus is not here on earth. He's seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He's not physically performing miracles here today that we can deny and attribute to the work of Satan. There is an unpardonable sin though today, and that sin is to remain in unbelief. You see, the work of the Spirit is to convict, to reprove of sin and righteousness and judgment to come. And if an unbeliever rejects the work of the Holy Spirit, showing them that they need to be saved, that person will be lost. Today, the unpardonable sin is to reject Jesus and to remain in unbelief. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But the Bible also says in John 3.36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The only unpardonable sin today that anybody can commit is rejecting the Holy Spirit's prompting to trust Jesus as their Savior 
and yet to remain in unbelief.